Also, regarding the Christmas carols that we're going to sing second hour on Monday the 24th, you all know about the handout that you need to print out, right? There will be one more page. The reason is because we're only going to do three carols, but they're all rather exotic languages. Do you, did you see which languages we're going to sing? Jordan. What? Jordan. Jordan is one? Jordan. What? Oh, how do you say it in English? How do you say 支票 in English? That's the correct pronunciation. <laughs> Wouldn't understand it otherwise. The word is pronounced Czech. Czech. So Czech and Georgian and Scottish Gaelic. Scottish Gaelic is the one that's hardest to read because the spelling is so different from the pronunciation. So if you look at the spelling, the actual pronunciation is very different from what you would expect. So I'm going to post IPA symbols for Scottish, otherwise it's going to be very hard to do. And I only just did a transcription myself listening to the song online. I don't know Scottish Gaelic, but I thought it was a really, really beautiful song. It has some interesting sounds in it, so I thought we would do something different this year. I haven't done this one other years. The other ones I have done other years. So I will give you another handout with IPA for the Scottish Gaelic lyrics, okay? So you'll need to print out one more page. And I haven't posted it yet, but I should have it posted today. Uh, I hope that you have started on your assignment to transcribe the first paragraph of Xiao Bu Ding into Mandarin IPA, into um, uh, IPA transcription of Mandarin. Do you have any questions that you'd ask, like to ask right now? Because I'm not going to spend time on it today. We'll work on it on Monday first hour. Anybody have any questions you'd like to ask right off about the Chinese transcription exercise? Start on it early because it's something new for you. It's all the harder because it's your native language. If it were not your native language, uh, language some things would be easier. I find that for me, I often say, I'll say, well, this is how you say it in British, but my British is not very good. Well, English is my native language. I should be able to do better. But the thing is, I have pretty high standards, and I have a British teacher, and he, he encourages me, but if I say it wrong, I can hear it in his voice. The funny thing is, I'm not afraid to pronounce other languages, because I don't have that intimidation of it being my native language. Because you, should, you feel you should know it already. But for another language, you have a blank slate, and you just do it. And you probably do it more accurately because you don't have all of the prejudices and expectations from your native language. So a lot of the things I do in British, I'm just converting from American, right? Just like when you try to speak Minan and then often it's not very good, right? So even if you're a native speaker, sometimes you do that. That happens. So what happens to you with me now, you happens to me with British English. I think I know a lot of the theory, and I can produce a reasonable version when I have to. But it's harder with your native language, because you've got all of this interference from your own dialect, which is different. And it will lead you astray sometimes. When you have a totally new language, you don't have anything to lead you astray. Everything is new, blank slate. Often you do much better, because you don't have a lot of confusing information. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So that's a kind of funny thing. So my Scottish will not necessarily be good. It happens that there are not many native speakers of Scottish Gaelic left. It is a dying language, and the Scottish people admit this. They're trying to save it. They teach it in schools and elsewhere. But not many people speak it anymore. It's not used for everyday communication in, in most situations. But they also believe it's worth keeping, and it's a very Beautiful language with a beautiful culture, especially the musical culture of all the Gaelic languages. They have a wonderful music culture. So the language lives on, I think, most strongly in music. So if you look online, you will find quite a few songs in Scottish Gaelic. The people who sing them may not be actual speakers of Scottish Gaelic. Maybe some know a little, but not necessarily a fluent native speaker. So. Um, that's for Monday. One more sheet to print out. 
Uh, you need to hand copy the vowel allophone rules for chapter four, and those are due on Wednesday. In addition, if we finish the chapter today, and I hope we do, you also need to do the exercises for chapter four, and they are also um, quite complex. There are quite a few of them. You need to do work with the one look, dic one look dictionary. So start early on the exercises for chapter four. There are quite a few items. You need to use one look. Don't try to do it some other way. Just use one look. It will save you a lot of time. And try to be exhaustive. When they ask you to list if a certain combination of sounds occurs in English, try to list all the one-syllable words you can find. 所有的单音节的英文字就是尽量全部都列进全部列出来 okay? So for Wednesday, you have the Mandarin IPA exercise. Hand copy the vowel allophone rules. They're short. The only hard part of that is you need to think why you are copying by hand. So you understand what you're copying. If you're just copying mindlessly, it's not going to do you much good. You need to understand as you write, and that's the point of slowing you down by writing them so that you think about them and understand them. And also the exercises for Chapter 4. Those three things are all due on Wednesday. Okay? Okay, ma? Don't ma? And don't forget um, the handout for Monday for singing. Any questions before we go on? If you have any overdue work you need to hand in, make sure you do it. Do it during break since we've already started. We're going to continue with Chapter 4. That's what we are doing today. Okay, and whose turn? Everybody ready? We're on page 92. I know that we finished two. I think we're on three. As you can see from figure 4.2, both of the deep... 4.2? Everybody remember the little song at the end, the continuation rise? Because it... It has a tonic syllable in it. The tonic will be high. You come down low and then you come up again a little bit. So, um, how should we say this? 4.2. 2 has the tonic, right? So, 4.2. 4.2, everyone? 4.2. Good. As you can see from figure 4.2, both of the diphthongs. Both of, everybody watch OF. Uh, yeah. Because it's such a common word, it's going to take some effort to change it. It's not of, anyone, it's of. Uh, of. Uh, Please fix that little word. Put a little star or something by it in your notes so you fix it. There are a couple other little words you need to change. How do you say S A Y S? Many of you said it wrong, and then the majority took over with the correct answer. It's says. Says. Yeah. Because of this oath problem, it reminded me of other words that are very, very common and wrong and often don't get fixed because they're such ingrained habits. So, um, get a pen. Says is pronounced like this. Everybody? Says. says. Yeah, don't say says. It's not says. It says. Says you learn says in school, some of you, right? 学校有没有叫says这个发音? Some of you, yeah, it's not right. So says some dialects actually do say it that way, but not in standard English. And said, it's not said, it's said, and it's so common you think people would notice, but because you probably said it so many times in school before, you're not really paying attention when people say the words, so you're not hearing the pronunciation. Says. Said, our first word was of. Everyone, of. 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 All right, another common one, this one. How do we say this? Be what? Very good, good. Because. Dao, V, wedge. Everyone, because. because. Don't say because or anything like that. Okay, it's because. And they're probably, oh, then we'll have to review this one because I still hear it. And I'm going to try yet another pen, excuse me. <clears throat> How do we say this one? I want to ask you a question, not ask you a question. Everyone, ask. ask. Let's try it in the third person singular. How do we say that? Yeah, you have to make an effort. You've got three 
three consonants in a row. So if you're just sloppy, it'll come out X. But it's S, X, S, X. It's not that hard, but you have to slow down and say them one at a time. Everyone, ask. 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 Asked. 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 Yeah, please be careful about these. Because right away, people label you as either educated or not so educated on how you pronounce these words. So if you say X, immediately you get this label of not so educated. And I don't think anybody wants to do that on purpose. Once more, everyone says. 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 Said. 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 Of. Of. Because. Because. Ask. Ask. Asks. 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 Asked. Asked. There we go. All right, let's continue. Both of the diphthongs, I, ow, as in high. As in. As in. Right. Both as in. As in. As in. Good. High, how. Start from more. Start, your R. Start, start from more or less the same, a low central vowel position. Okay. Same. Same. Put that in the list too, everybody. Same. Same. Let's please fix that. That goes with name, which we've practiced. Same. And don't say sem. Everyone, same. Same. Uh-huh. And what else did I notice here? Try to link. Remember to link. Um, otherwise, it sounds really choppy when you're reading. So as in hi, how, start from more or less, more or more or less, more or less. Um, and continue. Me. Midway between a and a, and in BBC English, closer to a uh, than to any of the other vowels. Now, a uh looks strange here, but that's because it's the British uh they're talking about, which is not uh at all. But it's more like a uh, cup, a cup of tea, a cup, cup. So it's getting close to a uh in British English, so that if that uh looks strange, it's because you're thinking in American, which is the natural thing to do in this environment. So. Uh, it's closer to a. Uh, uh, let's look at the um, vowel spaces that we saw on the preceding page on page 90. Uh, one student was asking after class about how you interpret all these lines here. And we have the monophthongs and diphthongs. The monophthongs are represented by what? By dots, right, the black dots. The diphthongs have wedges, and one end is thicker, wider, and one end is a point. The thicker end is the more prominent end. It's not necessarily where you start. It's not necessarily where the diphthong starts. It's the more prominent part of the diphthong. And diphthongs with the more prominent part at the end are called, at the end, are called, Rising diphthongs are going up to something more prominent. And we have only one rising diphthong, and where is it? You, you right. So that's why it starts out very she, because the ye is very short and not so prominent. The prominent part of you is the u part. That's why the line gets thicker, gets wider. That's the only rising diphthong we have in the English, among the English diphthongs. All of the others are what kind of diphthongs? Falling diphthongs. And for these, we start where? At the point, right? Start at the point, and then go to the thicker part, the wider part. And that, that is uh, the, ca the case for all of the falling diphthongs. So for example, for A, we start at A and go to E. A, A. And it starts by the thicker part, goes down to the point. A, it doesn't go down, it goes up, excuse me. It goes, it's confusing. We call it a falling diphthong because it's falling in prominence. So that's why falling and rising may confuse you, and it just confused me a bit. So A to E, not quite to E, and it's not exactly E either. You see the thick part at the bottom, A going up to the point. And that's true for the other diphthongs. We have I starts somewhere in the middle between A and A, and that's what we just read. You see A is a low front vowel, A is a low back vowel. Then in the middle, we've got ping an da an da nega in. It's yo mao zi a. So if you ever want to find how to pronounce that vowel, it's not a, it's not a, it's in between. Just say ping an da an an 
Say it in Chinese. An. Take off the n now. An a. That is that. That is that symbol. Your mouth is the a. Just this n. So by knowing Mandarin, you can find it very easily. And that's about where the Scottish a is. The one that they use both for a and a. So they will say、um, both hat and father with the same vowel. Hat father. Hat father. They both get the same vowel, and it's about there. Tabulus and negativa. So we have a or a. It goes to e to a, for i. Then we start again at a place close to that for ao. Starts about at a and goes up towards u. Because the high me or one chan da da u. So then we get ao. And for American, we have o starting with the o. It's close to a. And the o, she says o is in that place. Going up to u o, 还没有到 u 那么高，在 u 那个附近。And this is only 大概 This does not mean your tongue will do exactly this in your mouth. This is 示意图 It just gives you an idea of how it works. This is just what they calculated based on some data, but everyone's going to be a bit different. 就大概是这个样子 For American, it's o. For British. You'll see that for that <coughs> diphthong, we're starting more in a more central place, and it's o, o instead of <coughs> instead of o, we have o. Okay, and then finally we have oi. It's a bit different for British and American. You can see with American, it starts more front or more back. It's a bit more front. And I keep telling you not to make oi too long. Remember when you say boy, I tell you to say. Boy, boy, make it shorter. That's one place where the vowel is too long in Taiwan English. Usually, Taiwan English vowels are too short, but this is one that's too long—the all part of the oi diphthong. So don't say boy; it's boy, boy in American. But it's further back in British and a bit longer in British. I've noticed that in my British teacher. So his oi is a bit different from mine. 比较长一点，比较后面一点。You don't have to worry about those details. I'm not going to test you on details like that, but just be aware of it and make sure you can understand what they're showing in this, in these figures. And I think I covered most things except for the British upside down. Meo mal zida a. And remember, that's the it's a short vowel, and it is often it often occurs where we have o in spelling, like p o t, pot, pot. It's a short sound. It's got a bit of rounding and it's a bit low. 还没有到啊那么 low, but pot, 短的，有一点圆唇 Upside down a only in British. We don't use it in American normally. You could for some dialects, but I don't want to confuse you now. 就是我们的系统，我们就照它这个图上面的 Did we miss anything? So e, u, and u, i, e, and a, e, a, i, o. Oi, O for British, O for American. I think that covers everything in the picture. Is that all clear? Anybody have any questions? Jerome, everything clear? Any questions? Okay. How? Let's go back to where we were reading. <clears throat> It says the、um, Oxford Dictionary of Pronunciation for Current America、uh, for Current English transcribes the American I as Oi in British English. And remember that sometimes I is pronounced I. Why? In what situation? And it's not just Canadian. We have that in mainstream American dialect、uh, dialects as well. So use 刀子 for an example. 单数的刀子 is knife, but the 复数 is knives. Knife, knives. 你用这个做例子，两个例子的话，一对例子。Then you can hear the difference. Knife, knives. So for I, it's not as though I is a perfect replacement. It's a replacement in what situation? A good replacement in what situation? When the sound after the diphthong is voiceless. Yeah, not voiceless. Voiceless. 对，就是 I 后面的音是五声的时候，它就是 I 的音。它有声就是 i knife knives life lives wife wives 
um, light lied. Lied, he lied to me. Light lied. I 后面无声的话就是 a， 有声的话就是 i。That's one of the two diphthongs that have Canadian raising. The other one is ow in Canadian, but not in American and most other dialects. It is also in Scottish as well. So loud, loud in Canadian. That's the other diphthong that has Canadian raising in Canada. So loud, loud. But in American, it's just loud, loud. Meo tapie. Is that all clear? Since we're talking about diphthongs,、uh, it's good to get that sorted out. Again, we talked about it before in class, but、um, maybe it wasn't all clear, or maybe you don't remember it all. Okay, let's continue. Say, say the word "I" but very slowly and try to isolate the first part of it. Part of it. Part of it. Yeah, instead of part of it, say part of it. Part of it.、Uh, no, 你是一个字一个字念。念的很，就是分得很开。Part of it， 其实应该念 part of it。Part 跟 of 中间有个 t， it becomes a tap， right？ t 在两个母音当中 ，becomes a tap。So to link it， we turn part of it to part of it。Yeah。Okay。Compare this sound with the vowels a a a as in bad but father。All right。So the word "i" is the diphthong "i," right? It's spelled "e-y-e," but it's "i-e," and we don't have it on the board. And he wants you to just listen to the first half of the diphthong, so you can isolate the first vowel. So everybody say "i." I. All right. Now slow down and don't say the "e" part. I, ah, ah, ah. It's not "ah." It's not "ah." I ah.、Uh, can you find where your tongue is? Try to feel where your tongue is when you say just the first half of I. Try it again. I I ah ah ah. All right. So you'll find that this ah.、Uh, okay. He wants you to compare it to ah and uh and ah.、Uh. So make that sound, then compare it to ah. Make that sound, compare it to uh. Make that sound. Compare it to ah.、Uh. Do that now on your own. Go ahead. I ah eh ah uh ah ah. All right. So is the first part of the diphthong I like any of those other vowels? Those three vowels. It's not ah.、Uh, it's not uh, and it's not ah.、Uh. It's something else. It's lower than uh. It's sort of in that area, but it's lower. Um. So the point here is that. Either of the components of a diphthong normally does not exist in that language, or certainly not in English, as a monophthong. 只要是双母音的任何一个成分，它都不会以那个单母音的形式出现。所有的单母音的那些音，跟双母音里面的成分都不一样。That's clear. That's the point he wants to make. Okay,、uh, continue. Now make a now make a now make a long a、uh, in uh, as in father, and then say the word I as if it began with this sound. All right, let's try that. Instead of saying I, use the a、uh, in father to replace the first component of the diphthong. Say ah,、uh, and now say I, I, I. It's still understandable. It's not that bad, but it sounds a little odd, right? Continue. The 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 result should be some. Re result. Result should be something like some forms. Some forms. Remember, some is 某一些有对比的意思啊 Should be like some forms of. For forms. Forms. Yep. Uh, New York or London Cockney English. Uh, pause. It's not New York Cockney. New York is 一个单独的一个项目 or London Cockney. Uh, New York or London Cockney English pronunciations of I. Okay, we've talked sometimes about New York dialect and our the most I think the most notable vowel is ah because it gets really exaggerated. Instead of coffee on the West Coast, they can say coffee. Coffee. I say coffee, but in New York it's coffee. Coffee, 
coffee, coffee. All right, but their ah is also a bit different. And if you exaggerate the ah, make it sound like father and I, then maybe you sound like you're speaking a New York dialect. Ah, I, I. I don't know how accurate that is. This is a subjective Or London Cockney, or London the that Northern Cockney region, Cockney. They may be more similar to this. Go on. Try some other pronunciation. Some other. Some other. Other. Why? 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 That's right, contra contrast, we're comparing it. So just like some forms, some other pronunciations. Some other pronunciations, starting, for example, for, with the vowel. For example. For example, with the vowel a. 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 a, a, mm -hmm. a as in bad. Mm -hmm. In the. Okay. In, in this case. In this case. In this case. This case, 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 some and other. All of these are used contrastively. So, like some forms of New York, uh, try some other pronunciations. In this case, the sangha dosha contrastive. So, what does this tell you? And this should go in your pronunciation notes. <coughs> you have to understand what you're reading, and you have to understand what came before it. You have to understand what came before it, and what you're reading now, and you have to understand what you're reading now is referring to. You don't know what it is, you won't be able to understand it's the same. Right? I think the normal Taiwan way of reading English is you read word by word by word by word. You're not even thinking of, hey, this sum is the same thing. Do you think that most Taiwanese think things like that when they're reading English? Do you think so? I don't think so. At least I can tell by my ears that my students they're too busy reading. They can't think of what sum is doing. So you now have finished almost a whole semester of phonetics. You're going to be different. You need to usually read ahead. And start marking things. Otherwise, when you're busy reading, your brain can't handle so many tasks. It will forget that this thing is Did you all get what I'm saying? Read ahead, do text markup. You have to think what is referring to what, otherwise you won't know what is supposed to get stressed. And you think, why do I have to think so much and put stress on these words? I've been, I've been living 18 years without thinking about this before. Why do I have to think about this now? Right? The thing is, why do we do this? Why is it important to learn these things and start doing them in your own speech? How does Zhong Yaxing Zainari? Exactly. That's the whole answer. Because without that, your listener is going to have to struggle to understand what it is you're talking about. If you don't stress these things, your listener will be confused. They'll get confused. They'll have to think hard, figure out this sum actually is contrastive, blah, blah, blah. They have to do everything that you don't do. Anything that you don't do, you wash your hands of the responsibility, somebody has to do it. It doesn't just get, go, doesn't float out into other, outer space. Everything you don't do, who has to do it? The listener has to do it for you. But you're the one who's speaking or reading. It's your responsibility. That's, like I said, where I differ from Professor Jenkins. She believes the listeners need to take more responsibility. Yes, as learners, we do need to try hard to understand everybody in all kinds of accents. I totally agree. But as a speaker, we should do everything that we are able to make it easier for the other person. We don't want to make somebody suffer when we can avoid it. Why do you want to make somebody else suffer? If they suffer too much, they don't want to talk to you anymore. It's just too tiring, as I've said before. That's why you need to think of these ahead of time. Put the stress where it belongs. The listener will get right away what you're trying to say. They won't have to waste energy, and you can concentrate on your content rather than on the technical details and the mechanics. Do you see? It's really very important because you want to be nice to your listener, and that's a good reason. Go ahead. In, in, this, in this case, the result is a somewhat affected pronunciation. All right. So we already tried ah with I. Let's try ah with I. How does that sound? Say ah and then use it as the first part of I. Go ahead. I, a, a, a. 
my eye hurts. My eye hurts. And he says it probably sounds like a somewhat affected pronunciation. What's affected? What's affected? Han zuo zuo. Han zuo zuo. She has a really affected uh, sounding accent. Her speech sounds really affected. Just a gui zhuang zu mo yi chang. Affected, han bu zi ran. All right, so that's this paragraph. We spent a lot of time on it. I hope you got some things out of it beyond what's in the paragraph, but that you also understood the paragraph as well. Um, I'm going to do the next one myself, uh, and I will still assign readers, but I want to also make sure that we don't go too slowly. The diphthong I, I'm going to use a microphone, excuse me. <clears throat> the diphthong I, as in high, by, moves toward a high front vowel, but in most forms of English, it does not go much beyond a mid front vowel. Say a word such as by. I'm from the north in America, and we have high vowels. Our vowels are quite high. And I don't go all the way to E for by, by, it's too much. But I go pretty high. It's not just it, by, by. Doesn't work for me. By, ta kwaya dao yi. So whatever he says here, my vowels are higher. To me, they sound more natural. So, hai chao guo yi, kwaya dao yi le, kasa hai bu dao yi. Say a word such as by, making it end with the vowel e as in bed. We're going to do the same thing now with the second part of the diphthong. Instead of changing the a and i, we're going to change the second part, the e part. If we make it e as in bed, so i, let's change i to i. Hold me as a bed, then again e. Everybody say e. E. All right, make that the second part of i. Try. I. 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 OK? A diphthong of this kind probably has a smaller change in quality than occurs in your normal pronunciation. So, so he's saying that if you use e, your tongue doesn't make such a long trip, unless you are from a place like where? Like, middle of the paragraph? Sixth line, Texas or somewhere in the south, because a lot of diphthongs in American English, in standard American English, are in fact monophthongs in the south. But some sounds actually get made even longer. This is one that gets cut shorter, like la, I like it, lock, lock, instead of like, I say like. Texas is something like lock, okay? So they pretty much drop the second part of the diphthong in, in, in I. But in someone, in some sounds, even some monophthongs like a, eh, they will turn into two syllables in some southern dialects. So, 不是说只要是南部腔都变得比较短,不是这样子. Like for a eh and can, in some southern dialects they say can, I can, I can't, can. That's worth putting in your notes. You will notice that in the speech of uh, speakers of southern English. Uh, Southern, the southern part of the U.S., from the southern part of the U.S., speaking Nambu Chang, okay? So, can, can, for can, can, can. But I becomes something like ah, lack. Mm. So, they will uh, make the diphthong and by and die into long monophthongs, ba, da. I don't want to die, I want to buy something. They say, uh, then say by deliberately making it end with the vowel i as in bid. So let's say by, but make the e into i. By, by. Okay, that sounds weird too. This vowel is usually slightly higher than the ending of this diphthong. For many speakers of English, it's lower for me. It's lower for me. So this part doesn't agree with how I say it. Finally, say by with the vowel e as in heed at the end. Now you're going to make it really high and exaggerated. To me, that sounds better than bai. Bai. It sounds almost OK for me. Try it. Bai. bai. We say that when we want to be either really clear or sarcastic. <laughs> for example, that's a good bai <laughs> if we want to be silly. It's not natural or normal, but we use it for fun sometimes. But for me, it's better than bai. Bai is, it just sounds southern. Bai is closer to the way I say it. 
There, this is a much larger change in quality than normally occurs in this word, also for me. But some speakers of Scottish English and Canadian English have a diphthong of this kind in words such as sight, which is different from the diphthong that they have inside. What is he talking about here? He's saying that the diphthong in sight sounds different from that inside. He's talking about Canadian raising that we just discussed just now. That's another pair of examples. Just like knife, knives, sight, side. Sight is I, side is I. Sight, side. And I have it very clearly. Next page, 93. The diphthong ow and how usually starts with a quality very similar to that at the beginning of high. So we're now comparing which two diphthongs? I and? I and what? Louder, please. Ow, right. We're comparing I and ow. We've just finished talking about I. So uh, if you're getting a little lost, if you need to know about I, just go back over these paragraphs. He's trying to so now we're going to do the same thing with ow. We'll finish this paragraph. Ow usually starts with a vowel that's very similar to the one that starts off the diphthong in high. So I, ow, 它那个起点差不多, And that's why we use your mouths at A. We use the same symbol that you learned in school long ago with, with KK, if you learned KK. Try to say owl as if it started, or first of all, let's say ow. Everyone, ow. Ow. It's very, very similar to Mandarin. 跟, 跟国语的ow的音很接近, Try to say owl as if it started with a eh, as in had. So everyone say a. Eh. And now use it for the first part of ow. 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 I think some people do speak like that, but I certainly don't. Some speakers of the type of English spoken around London and the Thames estuary. I bet you wouldn't have said that if I didn't tell you, right? The Thames estuary in Sanjiaozhou, often called estuary English. estuary English. 我就是我之前提过的 one, two, three, one, two, three, and building. 这个building的发音非常的普遍。我现在碰到英国的年轻人，几乎都是没有那个母音后的l，都是building，有个u在那边. Right? In British, in in estuary English, in young people's British English. So some of them have a complicated movement in this diphthong, making a sequence of qualities like those in e as in bed, uh, ah as in bad, and u as in food. So it's ow, ow, something like that. So how, how, now, brown, cow. 就是类似这样的发音. Some people have this diphthong, 而且不要学,就不标准. <laughs> Just recognize it and have fun with it. Of course, don't make, make fun of it. If people speak that way, it's just the way they speak. And that was the bell. Let's take a break. We're going to continue, and we're going to try to move kind of fast now. We've just finished talking about which two diphthongs? I and ow. And next, we're going to talk about a, and that's the second paragraph on page 93. The diphthong a as in hey varies considerably in different forms of English. Some American English speakers have a diphthong starting with a vowel very like e eh in head as shown in the upper part of figure 4.2. You can look at it if you want to. Most BBC English speakers and many Midwestern Americans have a smaller diphthong starting closer to i as in hid. So a or a, just look kind of subtle the gaudu the wen ti. Dao di shi shi bi di hai shi bi jiao gao. A, a, wo da hai man dang zhong, a. Estuary English, as described above, has a larger diphthong so that words such as mate, take, sound somewhat like might, tyke. And that's sort of the, um, the stereotype we have of cockney. Estuary English is cockney in Shanghai Manshenda. So might and tyke, 
might take. And that is pretty common. If you listen to ICRT, I know you don't listen to the radio, but just to hear it, there is a British announcer named Gavin Phipps. Conversely, others, including many Scots, have a higher vowel, a monophthong that can be written as a, take, take, make. Instead of make, it's make, take. And they had something like that in Hawaii when I was there. 在Hawaii,他们讲了一种英文叫pigeon,之前讲过杨金邦,他们的英文叫pigeon,可能不至于pigeon,可是一般人,他的那个a,念a的还蛮多的. So in some dialects, it is not quite so much of a diphthong. And that, I understand, is why Kenyon and not just use the letter e as a symbol for a. He felt it wasn't very diphthongal. But that creates problems in Taiwan English, because that's why you say things like mech instead of make and mac in Taiwan English. So KK in standard American English and in British. So A Check your own pronunciation and see how you should represent it. Let's just say it um, Let's say a couple words with A. Usually Taiwan students have no problem with hey. Hey, it's like a mail winty. Everybody, hey. hey. Say. Say. But if you put a vowel at the end, it becomes different. For example, hate. A lot of people say hat. I hat him. Okay, well, Mao Zita. Hate. 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 Mate. Mate. Made. Made. Please watch that A. That is the number one problem in Taiwan English, in my opinion. What's your name? Should be what's your name. What's your name? What's your name? Should be what's your name. 那你看到这个A这个母音,不管后面是M,N,或是一个色音,PTK,BDG,你不管怎么样,你照样念A,这个要很刻意,很提,就是一定要提醒自己, because in my 27 years of observation,这个音是大部分人都会念错的, so A,E,A,E,这个要刻意去练, the next diphthong that we're going to talk about here is O, as in Ho, and Ho is Chuto, by the way, Di Tao. I learned that from the Taiwanese folk songs. Tao Zha, Zha, okay. How? Um, it can be regarded as the back counterpart of A. A is the back counterpart of A. A is the back counterpart of A. Now O is the back counterpart of A. So O. A is the back counterpart of A. Now, the back counterpart of the back counterpart is O. Everyone, O. This is also a problem in Taiwan English. A lot of people say no instead of no. So, KK音标的O,记得是应该是O,是个双母音,跟国语的欧洲的O几乎是一样的,更长而已。欧洲的O,然后非常里面,非常的非,里面的那个A,那个音,就是英文的A,只是还要再长一点。非,非,take,fate。so国语的A后面加个E,A,A加E,那差不多够长。Because when I have students read this, usually they say it perfectly. Okay, everybody say this. Now this. Good. Okay. Let's try that. Perfect. What word is that? Right. Read it like this, not fat or fet. Excuse me, started the wrong stroke here. Or fet. No, no, it should be fate. And think of this whenever you read A. Think of this part. A ja e, and you will get it because you can do it perfectly in Chinese, which means all you have to do is carry it over to English. Although that's hard, because as soon as you think your brain turns on English, it turns on the wrong vowel. 
So you say, I'll say, um, say A in Chinese, they say A, uh, 加个 E, A, E, A, E, okay. Now say Fei, Fei is okay. Now put a T at the end, fat. I said, don't say it in English, say it in Chinese. Okay, Fei, fat. And it goes over and over and over again because your brain has got this deeply, deeply ingrained habit. It's really hard to change. You have to take a hammer and chisel and chisel it out and then replace it with Chinese. Chinese will make it perfect. So use Chinese to get there and it'll be fine. Mm. Let's see, for O, it's the uh, back version of A. It is principally a movement in the high-low dimension. 意思就是说,它从O到U, is, is, it, is it high to low or low to high? High to low or low to high? Low to high. It starts a little bit lower and it goes higher. But in most forms of British English, we don't say O quite like that. It's O. O. So it's more front back. 当中一点,从刷差不多那个位置,然后呢,往后,后面比较高的地方, O. So everyone, American O. o. British o. o. Okay, it's not perfect, I overdo it, but that's about how it works. Um, the remaining diphthong moving in the upper direction is oi. Upward direction is oi as in boy. Again, this diphthong does not end in a very high vowel. It often ends with a vowel similar to that in bed. And that's true more of British English than American English. Boy, boy, the So a lot of the things he says here, when he says the vowel doesn't go very high, I think it's more British. At least mine from Minnesota are pretty high. Boy, boy, e. e, but it's pretty high. He says we might as well have transcribed it as boa. Now that sounds like nabu chang to me. So this is not applicable to my kind of English. Mm, okay, so just remember, don't make the all part too long. Everyone, boy, boy, toy, poison, um, coil, etc. Okay. Mm, next, the last diphthong is the U as in Q, it differs from all other diphthongs in that the more prominent part occurs at the beginning or end. Are you just going to sit there? At the end. Has to be more of you and louder. Okay. All right. So the more prominent part occurs at the end. U. U. The Y is a huayin. It's a glide. And a glide is the part of the diphthong that is not so prominent. So y is a huayin here, it's a glide. And i, e, is a huayin, it's a glide, it's a huayin. Because it is the only vowel of this kind, many books on English phonetics do not even consider it a diphthong. They treat it as a sequence of a consonant followed by a vowel. 或者一个接近音,一个approximate,加上一个一般的单母音,很多人是这么分析. We have considered it to be a diphthong because of the way it patterns in English. He's talking about the distribution of you in English words. And when we're talking about patterns and distributions, we're talking about what area of study? About it? Is it phonetics or phonology? Phonology, fen pei, ta de mo shi, ta de pattern, ta de gui zi, nei xie dong xi zi su yi phonology. So when we're talking about how it patterns, we're talking about phonology. Historically, it is a vowel just like the other vowels we have been considering. Furthermore, if it is not a vowel, then we have to say that there is a whole series of consonant clusters in English that can occur before only one vowel. Now, you have to think here to get what he's saying. The sounds at the beginning of pew, beauty, q, spew, skew, and for most speakers of British English, tune, tune, dew, sue, zeus, new, liu. I don't say them that way in stew. Um, if, we, if we analyze the vowel as a monophthon, what are we going to do with that y? We have to put it somewhere. 
So he's saying that you probably would have to put it with the first consonant. So then we have a lot of strange consonants. Instead of just p, b, k, etc., we now have p, p, b, b, sk, sk. Do you see what he's saying? 那个叶要找个地方放。那如果你认为那个叶不属于 u 这个音的话，那个叶要跟那个子音并在一起。So then we have, for example, poo and pew, 两个不同的 p, p and pew. 如果那个里面的母音只是一个单母音的 u, do you understand this logic now? Karen, do you get it? No. Um, Julia, you get it. Can you explain it to the class in Chinese, please? Uh, it seems like if we if we have to divide this. That's exactly it. I don't know if everybody get it. Can somebody else? Jamie, do you get it? Can you explain too? The same. Can you say it in Chinese? Just a minute. I think this is almost long enough. You have to stand up a bit. Come over. 如果我们把那个 e 分开的话，那个 e 必须要跟前面第一个子音连在一起，所以那个子音就会变。Karen, okay, can you mind? So he's saying we got to put that e somewhere, and if we we don't if we don't like the idea that the e belongs with the vowel, u becomes u with the e there. Then we consider that a diphthong. Okay, we don't like that idea. We have to put the e with the consonant, and it becomes, for example, p and p. So 英文的不两个不同的子音。Now, do you think that we should posit a whole set of consonants in English with "ye" after it? English 的子音从多少会变会多出很多 ，right? 从 p, p p p 呃 p t k and b d g 会变成 p t k p t k 又变成另外一堆新的子音。我们需要这样做吗 ？No. 所以那个 "ye" 还是跟母音放在一起。That's the argument that he is. Uh, presenting here, uh, it's not actually 不是独立的母音啊，不独立的子音不是这样讲，而是一个 cluster， 是一个子音串，应该怎么说 ，right? So it's not a separate set of new consonants, but it's a separate set of consonant clusters. 因为本来没有 p 这样的 cluster， 有 p， we have play, pray, etc. We have clay and Tay for T we have tray etc. Twin T W and K plus W we have quit. So, 本来没有 T 或者呃 D 这样的子音串，没有这样的 cluster. Okay, 前面我讲的不清楚，因为我说应该是一个独立的子音，不是。他说我们就要设很多新的子音串。本来就没有这样的子音串，可是那个 E 不属于。U 的话，那就是要变成子音后的，呃，第二个子音，像 pay play 这样子。But we don't originally have pay p a， 没有这样子子音串。Okay, now it's clear. 原来是我自己讲的不对。All right, 是现在讲的比较对。Um, he says that in order to keep that in order, so we don't have to posit a whole bunch of new consonant clusters. We need to put the yu with the u, or it makes more sense to put the yu with the u. And、um, there are no English words beginning with pie or kia, kia. We have can, but we don't have can, and we don't we have we have pay, but not pie. So this yu, its allocation only appears in u before it appears. This j, it only appears in u before it appears. In other places, you can't put this yu with the u. Is that not clear? Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 Anybody not clear? Raise your hand. Okay. One more explanation. And、uh, go ahead.、Uh, so、Do it in Chinese, please, if you're going to explain. Oh,、uh, 就是为什么是叫做子音串呢？就是好像有很多子音的感觉，就是不止一个子音。可是它，呃，可是如果按照刚才的说法，是只有一个。Zi yin chuan is a consonant cluster, like in play, pray, stay, stray. 前面是两个或三个子音
just the ego ego chunyan. That's what we're talking about with constant cluster. Did that clear up, clear that up? Okay. Okay. And anything else you want to ask? I thought you were going to explain because a couple people said, "This is why you always have to explain the whole thing." Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Can we say kia, kiaid, kiaud, kiaud? So, 不可能，英文没有这样的音。Yeah only occurs where the vowel is u. So, for that reason, we're thinking that instead of considering kia as a cluster like kru or kla, it makes more sense to consider it part of the vowel. All right. If you still don't get it, you're gonna have to ask a classmate after class. We spend a lot of time on that. All right. So for that reason, it's because of the way it patterns. Its distribution makes us think that this y belongs to the u, and we shouldn't consider it a separate consonant that would be part of a consonant cluster. Okay, ma. Hmm. This is important. It will probably be on the test. Make sure it's clear. Make sure it's clear in your mind. If it's not clear, read it over. Ask. Discuss. Um, whatever, post on um, NTU phonetics, whatever it takes. So it will make a lot of things much simpler if we just consider y part of the vowel. So it's our only rising diphthong. So you won't wait either rising diphthong. Let's continue now. We're going on to a new section, page 94. We're talking about rhotic vowels, and these are vowels that have R coloring, and R comes after them, which is pronounced in rhotic dialects like. American English, like General American, but not in many dialects that are similar to Standard British, like Australian South African, generally don't have it.、Um, I can only say with speak with confidence about Standard British, though they definitely don't have r's after vowels. The only common stressed vowel of American English not shown in Figure 4.2 is er. And he writes it with a looks like a number three with a hook on it, as in sir, heard, fur. This vowel does not fit on the chart because it cannot be described simply in terms of the features: high, low, front, back, rounded, unrounded. Remember, those are the three kinds of features that we usually use. We usually can use to describe a vowel: ha, is it high or low? Is it front or back? Rounded or unrounded? It's a sangha, and those are the also they correspond to the three formants. Formant one, formant two, formant three. Okay, so 用这三个，我们来，我们来描述一个母音，通常就够了。But for this er, we can't, <coughs> we can't use just these three features to describe rhoticized vowels or r coloring.、Um, the vowel er can be said to be r colored. It involves an additional feature called rhoticization. And as I mentioned before, I believe that term was. Coined by Professor John Wells, he invented that term, and everybody uses it now. Just like high, low, and front, back, the feature rhoticization describes an auditory property: the R coloring of a vowel. Now, if we are describing a sound in terms of an auditory property, then is that sound more like a consonant or more like a vowel? It's more like a vowel. So R is actually much like a vowel, and It also behaves like a vowel. For example, in the American English tap rule, like、um, dirty, dir. 那个是后面有 r 的音，对不对？有 t， 有 e。可是那个还是会产生 tap, dirty。所以那个 r 就在 tap rule 来说，就 tap tap rule 来说 ，r 就等于是个母音。Okay, so r behaves a lot like a vowel. We're not going to count it as a vowel. It's still an approximate, but because we need to describe it auditorily, that tells us that it probably is more like a vowel. It is very much like a vowel. When we describe the height of a vowel, we are saying something about how it sounds, rather than something about the tongue gesture necessary to produce it. We say this many, many times. We see it many, many times in Latifoget. Similarly, when we describe a sound as a rhoticized vowel, we are saying something about how it sounds. So rhoticization. 这个是听觉上的，不是舌头放哪里的问题。当然，你要发出这个音，你的舌头跟嘴唇需要有，就是需要需要做出某一些动作。可是你光形容一些动作，可能不不够来嗯描述这个 r 的性质。基本上就是说，你能达到那个音效就对了，它听起来像 r 就对了，不管你怎么做的。Because there are two main different ways of making an r. Um, the transcription for the phrase "my sister's bird" in most form, forms of American English would be "my sister's hooked schwa," 
bird, and that's a three, the a vowel with an er. Not everybody does it this way. Some people just use schwa for the stressed one as well. Rhoticized vowels are often called retroflex vowels, but there are at least two distinct ways in which our coloring can be produced. See figure 4.3. You've got <clears throat> these pictures on the right now. These were produced, I believe, with magnetic resonance imaging, so MRI, MRI, and um, some speakers have the tip of the tongue raised as in a retroflex consonant. So if I say dirty, the speaker shown in the top panel of 4.3 uses or has this type of tongue configuration in er. Look at his tongue. You can see it. Top picture in 4.3, Kanadama. You can see his tongue. It's like this. R. That's the retroflex style of R in English. This is the style of R in English. All right? That's, the tongue is pointing straight up, and it's starting to curl back a little. Dirty. It's not my usual way of doing it, though. Um, others, such as the speaker in the bottom panel, keep the tip down and produce a high bunched tongue position. So look at the second picture. Is that right? All right, that's the second kind of way to make an R. That's the bunched R. 就是舌头挤在一起的方式，不是卷舌的方式，是舌头挤在一起的 bunch tongue的方式。So those are the two main ways you can make an R, and they sound similar but not exactly alike. For me, the dirty 那个 er 那个 er 的味道比较重. Bunch tongue 我觉得没有那个那么夸张，那种 er 的味道。这是我主观的一个描述。Dirty. Listen to me doing the two. I'm not good at the Jansha kind because I don't usually do that. So, dirty, dirty, dirty. I think the biggest difference is what changes if you retroflex. Dirty, dirty. Huh? Go ahead. Length. That's probably just me when I'm trying to perform. So, length is probably, that's not what I'm after. Yeah, pitch going in the direction of the vowel. The vowel changes a bit. The vowel will change. And you find that in, in Mandarin, you can try it out. How do you say sun? Say it again. All right, your R is not really strong, right? But you do have some kind of an R. Because if somebody says 儿子, that sounds not very educated. Is that right? 对吗? 听起来说教育程度没有那么高，或者可能就是非常的乡下的发音。Is that right or not? Uh, usually when we speak in Chinese, casually or fast, we won't produce so much, so many R's. That's right. That's right. And so you will have less R's. 可是你完全没有R，会吗？ 完全完全。儿子，儿子。Okay. Uh, 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 would you say that in a more formal situation? Which do you prefer? And I don't want to be a boy in Yuan, I just want to be talking normally now. Which one do you prefer? One or two? One, that was a little too Beijing. Okay. And two, you prefer one, right? Two is common. But it's marked. It's still a marking, I think. You can be very casual when you say it's three words. But it's still marked. You can still notice that the sound is a little bit more like the standard. Right? Some people are nodding. I agree with you, Jerome. I know it's very common. Because I still think it's a little bit marked. At least in a formal situation, I think you'll put a little bit of an R there. If the R is completely gone, I think it's marked. Because I really, really notice that most people have a little bit of an R. It's not like in Beijing. In Beijing, it will come out R. And I think the main difference is the vowel is also different. The reason I brought it up in Chinese is because you say R or 
But in Beijing, 儿子，有没有发现又到 R 去了？儿子。So 当你卷的时候，那个母音会受影响，是从母音听得出来。That was my point. So in dirty, dirty and dirty. 一方面，我觉得是那个母音会受影响。So that's why, for my ears, to my ears, retroflex and bunched R are not exactly the same. They both produce an R, but very often, the vowel gets more changed in the retroflex version relative to what I'm used to. So dirty, 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 er, er, 而且后面比较紧 Dirty, dirt, dirty. Okay, but I'm not a good printer. Producer of a retroflex because I don't use it much myself. But anyway, 母音会受影响 They both produce R because the 母音不会完全一样 Because your tongue's in a different place, 不可能完全一样 So,、um, these two gestures produce a very similar auditory effect. 就是听起来是蛮像的 X-ray studies of speech. Oh, I guess this is an MRI. I guess these are actually X-rays. Okay, they look something like MRI. All right.、Um, X-ray studies of speech have shown that in both these ways of producing a rhoticized quality, there's usually a constriction in the pharynx caused by retraction of the part of the tongue near the epiglottis. So for both of the R's, 你的舌头的后面会紧，然后你的咽鼻也会紧，是整个那个就舌根咽鼻那边都会紧。呃，呃，呃。Try to see if you can feel it. Say 呃、呃。有没有感觉到？舌头后面跟那个那个 pharynx 那个地方会紧，有没有 ？Try it, everybody. Err, err. Can you feel the back of your tongue? That whole area is getting tight. Try it. 感觉到会紧吗 ？All right, ours do that in Chinese and English as well.、Um, near the epiglottis, the most noticeable difference among accents of English is in whether they have R-colored vowels. 所以每呃就英文的不同的口音跟腔很大的差别就在于这个 r 母音后的 r 念不念的问题。In many forms of American English, rhoticization occurs when vowels are followed by r, as in beard, bared, barred, bored, poor, tire, hour. So we pronounce the r's. Accents that permit some form of r after a vowel are said to be rhotic. R H O， 因为这是希腊文的 R 这个字母，是 R H O 这么写的。Rhotic， 所、so、以根据这个字母编列这个字。The rhoticization of the vowel is often not so evident at the beginning of the vowel. Something of the quality of the individual vowel remains. But in sir, her, are the point here, and I've mentioned it before, but let's repeat it. For this vowel, or this vowel. The whole vowel is R. It is from the beginning to the end. It does not divide the vowel into the first and the second. The R starts right from the beginning. So early, early, 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 from the beginning. So 你可以分开来，前面一半就是那个母音，后面一半才有 R coloring. Everybody try early. You can feel that tightness right at the beginning. Early. Art. Can you feel that the beginning is just a plain vowel? The R only comes about halfway through, and you can see this instrumentally. 你用那个 plot， 用 spectrogram 这些仪器来测量的话 ，you can see it. So that's the important thing. For er, that's the only one that is r all the way through. All the other vowels like or, are, etc., they will all、um, have the just the vowel itself at the beginning, and the r starts about halfway through. That part is clear, Kaima.、Okay, mm, okay. Um. So, insofar as the quality of this vowel can be described in terms of the features high, low, and front, back, it appears to be a mid-central vowel, such as a with added rhoticization. 它现在要描述 er 这个音的话 ，it's mid-central vowel. It's a mid-central vowel. A, 再加上 rhoticization. Er, er. Okay, 是
，前后在中间，上下也在中间，再加上那个舌头，要不然是 retroflex， 要不然是 bunched up 的方式。OK， 嗯。Rhotic accents are the norm in most parts of North America. However, in some parts of the U.S., they don't have postvocalic R, or sometimes it's inconsistent. 有时候有，有时候没有。南部腔，我觉得有时候有，有时候没有。纽约也是。They were prevalent throughout Britain and Shakespeare's time, and still occur in the West Country, Scotland, and other regions distant from London. 英国很多地方也是有 R， 也是有母音后的 R， 可是就是标准英式腔是没有。还有它附近的区域没有，可是英国很多地方 ，r 还是要念出来。Okay. Um, try to find a speaker of English with an accent that is opposite of yours, rhotic or non-rhotic, as the case may be. Listen to their vowels in words such as mirror, fairer, sure, poorer, pure, and compare them with your own. Okay. The best that I can do in British English is something like this. It would be mirror, mirror. Mira, and I think that one's pretty good. It sounds good to my ears. Fera, Fera. Why don't we try those?、Uh, American and then British. Everyone, mirror, mirror, mirror. mirror. Uh huh. Fairer. Fairer. That's hard to say. Fairer. 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 Uh huh. Surer. 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 Uh huh. Poorer. 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 Uh huh. Purer. Pura. Pura, yeah, pura. It's pura in British.、Mm, okay, 有一些不是那么标准 but that's how it works.、Um, standard BBC English is not rhotic and has diphthongs not shown in Figure 4.2, going from a vowel near the outside of the vowel vowel space to a central vowel. We talked about those last、uh, when we were talking about、um, in in another test, Chapter Two, I think. In Chapter Two, we already covered this. <coughs> And these are described as ia and ia. So, for example, here is here, and there is there.、Uh, let's just try those. Here, 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 here. There. there, there, there. Some speakers have a long e instead of e, particularly before r, as in fairy and bearing. So,、um, fairy, fairy. 有些人就是 e。I'd、be out of time. Fairy.、Uh, that's what I have. Fairy in American. Fair, fair,、uh, and very. Some people have a centering diphthong, u,、uh, in words such as poor, poor, poor.、Um, but it's now being replaced by o,、oh, poor. He's very poor. And that's why you heard a vowel change when we were doing the words just now. So everybody, the old way is poor. Go. Poor. The current way is poor. Poor. He's very poor. Um, we also noticed in chapter two that some speakers have a centering diphthong, though we did not call it that, in words like hire and fire. For those, by centering diphthong means that we're losing part of the diphthong. It's going towards schwa. That's how she means schwa. So everyone, ha, fa. Okay. As a conclusion of this section, we will consider the ways in which vowels of different accents or indeed of different languages can differ. Each accent or language cont contrasts a number of a certain number of vowels. The first difference between two accents may be in the number of vowels they contrast. Californian English, for example, differs from many Midwestern accents of English in having lost the contrast between ah and wa, as in cot versus caught. So there is one fewer vowel in the Californian system. But like I said, it is now about 50 percent of the U.S. and that's a useful number. About half the U.S. does not distinguish. And it's not just California; it's all over the country. Minnesota, lots of people don't distinguish anymore.、Um, similarly, most British English accents have sy systemic differences from most American English accents in that they have additional vowels, distinguishing cart, cot, court by vowels that、uh, we can represent by a, o, and o. So, cot, cot, and colt. Those are the three British ones. In American, it's cart, cot. Court. Another way in which accents can differ is in the vowels that occur in certain words. Both BBC English and American Newscaster English have vowels that can be symbolized by a and a, as in fat and father. But BBC English has the a in gloss and lost, while American English has a, so gloss, lost in British, 
and glass last in American, but don't make the mistake of thinking that all the as or all the as in American turn into a in British. For example, can, can, C A N, can, in British is can. It's not con. So it's very complicated. I don't think they even have a good set of rules. My British teacher has not figured them all out himself. He gets them wrong occasionally, not to pick on him. But um, it's not straightforward. In spelling, upside down, So American cut, British cut. Standard Northern having a. All right. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Standard Northern British English has a. So the very first time I figured this out, I was listening to the BBC. And I heard somebody who I thought was British, and suddenly he sounded American, and then he sounded British again. It was totally confusing me. So they would say things like, um, um, the Borders live in a castle. I thought, with Borders, there's no R, but castle. Castle, that's a main shi. Oh, yuan lai, ta shi yin guo bei bu ren. Yin guo de bei bu ren, the a, gen mei shi de a, cha bu duo. OK? And they are noticed in the South because of that a. Now, how ling wai de cha bie shi a, like cup, a cup. They will say a cup. So, butter in British in the South is butter in the North. OK, butter. It's worth putting in your notes. Yin guo bei bu. 英式,標準英式的R會變A 英國北部,標準英式的R會變A 標準英式是R,like and that really confused me the first time, and that's when I realized, or that's when my teacher explained to me the difference. This kind of difference of, between accents is known as a difference in distribution of vowel qualities, as opposed to a difference in system, the number of ding, uh, distinct vowels. So, 英式美式都有啊也都有啊分配不一样 Got it? This might be in the test. The distribution is different. 它的分配是不一样,可是一样有 um, finally, some differences between accents are simply a matter of vowel quality. Two accents can have exactly the same vowel systems and the same vowel distributions, but the vowels can differ in quality. Thus, Texans and Midwestern Americans have similar vowel systems and distributions, but use different ways of distinguishing the vowels in words such as pi and the word for father, pa. So, pa, pa, that's a nigga. 蘋果派的派,然後father是pa,pa,pa,他還是有區別,並不是說pa變pa,並不是說他就等於father的a. Do you see what I'm saying? So I say pie in the south they say pa, apple pa. But for baba they say pa, muinho bien ma. Got it? Clear? Was it Stanley it's okay? Yes. 可以嗎? Mm -hmm. So, Southerners will say pa and pa, whereas Midwesterners will say pi and pa. Or to take a British English example, an old fashioned Cockney English and a modern estuary English accent may have the same vowel distinctions, the same systems, and use them in the same words, but use different vowel qualities. Cockney will have vowels best represented as ui and i in mate and might. So they say mate and might. Mate, might. 所以他把MATE mate 念作 might 以為他已經變成MIGHT的音 對不對? Are you following? 可是不是,因為might那個字也會變 So mate might 會變成 might 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 可以嗎? OK? Um, Esther English pronounces these words like uh, mate and might 
mate, might. All right. Try to compare your own accent of English with another accent and say which of the vowel differences are best described as differences in the system of vowels, which are differences of distribution, and which involve just differences in vowel quality. So for these three things, I will try to give you examples. The system is different when it comes to a, a, and a. Uh. For me, for example, pot. Pot for me is a. Uh. But in British, it's going to be o. Oh. So we have a different system here. system, systemic difference. So for glass, they say gloss, we say glass. Not just a fun pay, because it's like a, it's like a, ah, and all the winty, pot, and pot. I think it's already a system of winty, because it's not very easy to predict. If it's not easy to predict, it's not easy to predict. That's just a systemic difference. Okay, distribution is a fun pay, it's not the same. It's not the same, it's systemic. Fun pay is not the same. That's the distribution. And then, the last one is the value. Cup in American. Both in American and in British, we write it like this, but we say cup in American and cop in British. I think it's a value of tone. Fu hao yi yang, the system is the same. It's just the same thing. That's a difference in value. Okay, can you? So, a and a are different. It's very complex. That's the system. That's just the same thing. 那就是 distribution， 所以这个理念 distribution 跟 system 有点 confusing， 我自己还没有完全理清楚，我的那个老师也没有。可是我觉得两个成分都在，有些地方是因为规则不同，有些地方只是分配而已。So don't worry too much about that. This one has a different value. Cup, cup. Okay? 可以吗 ？All right. If the vowels are getting, if the rules are getting really complicated and you can't predict them, then we've got a systemic difference. Okay, so the fun pay bu yang the that's distribution. So that's this. We're going on to unstressed syllables with bells going to ring pretty soon. We haven't finished the chapter. We will finish it on Wednesday for sure. But start doing the exercises because on Wednesday it, they are still due because we don't have much time left. So do the exercises for chapter three. Copy the vowel allophones. The rules by hand, just like you did last time for the consonants, and also have your IPA transcriptions of Mandarin ready. Those are the three things we're going to concentrate on. We're going to do that first hour on Monday. Uh, we're going to work, continue working on the book. Actually, we should finish the book on Monday. We'll finish the book on Monday. And then for Wednesday, um, we'll correct your IPA transcriptions and hopefully your exercises as well. Okay? Is that all clear now? Oh, good. All right. We'll see you on Monday.